Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we've got a video featuring the brand new slicer from Prusa and it's called Prusa Slicer 2.0 and I can honestly say there's some fantastic features in this brand new release and there's never been a better time to own a Prusa 3D printer. So basically in this tutorial what I'm going to do is give you a sort of beginner's guide. So it's aimed at you know newbies in the 3D printing community and maybe you're thinking about getting a Prusa 3D printer or maybe you've just bought one and you want to find out how you can print your own custom models. So what I'm going to do is show you how you can download models from the web, how we import them to the workspace, how we slice them, how we set up all the print settings and I'll explain them all in detail. And then we're going to export the G-code to our 3D printer so that we can 3D print it. And if you follow my channel for a while, you will know that I've done a very similar tutorial for Slicer Prusa Edition, but I wanted to refresh it because we've got a couple of UI changes and a few additional settings in this brand new Slicer. So let's get stuck straight in. And the first thing you can see is obviously I'm, I'm using the brand new Slicer. And if you haven't downloaded this yet, what you can do is go to Prusa 3 d dot com forward slash drivers and any links I mentioned in this video will be in the description below so go check them out but basically what you want to do is locate which printer you have uh, in my case it's the Mark 3 and you can see there's a section here called drivers and apps and you want to click that hit the download button for whatever device you have Windows Mac whatever download it install it and then come back to this video once you've downloaded and installed the brand new package, you'll be greeted with a workspace like this. And we've bas basically got a empty workspace with a flat plane that represents the heat bed of the Prusa printer. And it doesn't look very fun, right? There's nothing there, it's empty. It's pretty boring. But what we can do is we can add in our own custom 3D models. And you might be thinking, where can I get my own 3D models? And basically, there's an awesome website called Thingiverse. And Thingiverse, if I show you my profile, Thingiverse is basically an open source platform where people will uh, design 3D models in CAD and then upload them for free for everyone to use. And it's a great little community of makers. And basically, you can put on there all your own designs. You can upload your own makes of other people's designs. It's a really cool sort of social platform that you can get involved in. And I've put up a couple of my own designs and this is my profile. So if you're interested, you can go and follow me on here. Uh, but for now, what I'm gonna do is show you how you can get 3D models from the site. So on the user bar at the top, you can see we've got explore. You wanna click that and then come down to things and you can see here we've got a load of things but what we can do is a drop down and you can filter it for popular featured or whatever if you go for popular you can see these are all the most recent popular 3d models and you can just pick whatever one you want say for example this one and you can download that if you want to you can see there's a big blue download button you don't have to sign up if you don't want to it just gives you the files you need and that's it but we're going to be using this one, which is a Batman model, and there'll be a link to this in the description if you want to use this. So all you do is hit that download button, and as you can see in the bottom left, download straight away, no signing up, it's awesome. So now we want to come back to our slicer, and basically what we want to do now is add the model into our workspace. And the first thing you want to do is make sure you're in the... 3D editor view. So in the bottom left, you'll see there's these two views. We've got the 3D editor view and we've got this 3D layer preview. And you want to make sure you're in the editor view to import a model. So once you're in the editor view, you can see at the top, we've got this add button. If you click that, you want to locate the file that you just downloaded. It'll be an STL file. And an STL file is basically a 3D model file. So we're going to select Batman HD.STL, which is what we just downloaded. Click open. And what you'll see 
is that your model is imported straight into the workspace. And if you're happy with that right away, that's fine. It'll be imported to the scale it was designed in. But if you wanted to make it smaller, for example, we've got this neat little set of tools on the left. So we've got a move tool, a scale tool, and a rotate tool. And basically, you can use these to modify the model in this workspace. And let's say, for example, we want to scale it. So we want to make it a bit smaller, right? And a couple of reasons why you might want to do this. You might want to save plastic because smaller models use less plastic, or maybe you have some other reasons of your own. But basically, if we click scale, you want to make sure you click on the model first and then click scale. You'll see we've got these kind of nodes that pop up around the model. And what we can do is just click and drag any of these and it'll scale the model however you want. If you grab a corner node, it'll scale it uniformly. So it'll keep all its dimensions. So for example, if we drag out, it'll go bigger. If we drag in, it'll stay that nice small size. And it'll usually always reposition it so it's placed on the heat bed for you. But there's also some other settings, you know, you can rotate it and place it on a certain face. You can also rotate it, for, ex for example, so if we click rotate, we've got this cool tool and you can rotate around any of the three axes and it's so much easier. What you can also do now is if you just click on the model and you hit control C and control V, it just pastes another one directly in. And this is awesome. You couldn't do this before, but it's little things like that that really make a difference. So for now, we're going to stick to one model because that's all we need for this tutorial. But basically, that's how you get a model imported and into the workspace for creating your 3D prints. So now what we're going to talk about are the print settings. And for this, we want to concentrate on the top right of the screen. So you can see here, proofs have divided this up now into three different modes. So we've got a simple mode, an advanced mode, and an expert mode. And basically what these do is they open up additional settings, mainly in the advanced settings in the tabs in the top left. So for example, if we go to filament settings or printer settings, as we click expert, you can see a lot more appears. And if you're a beginner, I, I wouldn't recommend messing with these settings straight away. Maybe have a look, you know, it doesn't hurt to have a look, learn about a few of them. And as you get more experience printing, you can play around with them and see what they do. And that's basically what I did. So for now, we're going to keep it on simple mode. And I'm just going to explain to you the print settings and what they mean. So the first one is this drop down here that is print settings. And if we click the drop down, you can see that we've got a lot of different presets ranging from draft to ultra detail. And first I want you to understand the concept of how a 3D print works, right? So if you think about how it prints, it prints one layer at a time on top of each other like this, all the way to the top until the 3D print is complete. Now, if you decrease that layer height so that you've got more layers on top of each other in the same amount of space, what you're essentially doing is increasing the detail in your print. But what you're also doing is increasing the print time. So it's going to take longer to print because there are more layers, right? So it, again, what you choose here for this setting really depends on you and your needs. If you're printing something that requires a lot of detail, maybe you've got um, a figurine that you, you want sitting on your desk. If you want it to look awesome and super detailed, you'd pick 0.05 millimeters. But bear in mind, this will take a lot longer to print. Whereas if you print in some sort of CAD mechanical piece that's going to be part of some bigger structure, you're probably not too bothered about detail. So you'd probably pick speed, maybe even draft. But typically, if you're unsure, stick with quality, 0.15 millimeters. This is a, a really good sort of well-rounded setting to go for. You can't really go wrong with it. So the next setting is filament. And if we click the drop down here, you can see that it basically gives us a lot of different filament brands. And if you've just bought a Prusa, it will have come with its own PLA, probably a, gray, a gray PLA. So you'd want to select here Prusa PLA. But it's important that you 
choose the right plastic for uh, whatever plastic you're using. You know, if, if you have got, for example, PETG plastic set up on your printer and you try and print using uh, PLA printer settings, that's not going to work. It'd try, but it wouldn't come out very well. So make sure that you select the right plastic and you can see on the spool holder there I've got some PLA so I would select Prusa PLA but if the brand of PLA that you're using say for example you, you don't buy Prusa's PLA you buy a third party brand that's fine that's absolutely fine I do the same but what you do in here then is select this generic PLA setting and basically what that does is a, there's a sort of standard that you use per type of plastic and the slicer will apply those settings for you and that's basically it just select whatever plastic you want make sure it's the right type and make sure it's the right brand if the brand's there if not select generic and that's it so the next one is printer and this is pretty obvious it's just what printer you have if you've downloaded the right package for the right printer that will be default set up for you the next drop down is supports. Now, support is quite a complex topic and I've made a separate video for this. So if you click the video tab here, you'll be taken to a new video where I thoroughly explain how you can create your own custom supports. And there's a couple of reasons, you know, why you need supports, but for example, this model would actually require supports to print. So if we look at the model and how it's built, it doesn't always print directly on top of itself right so you can see the back here is sort of you know protruding outwards and when it comes to 3d printing you can't you can't really print on top of nothing right you can't print on thin air it doesn't really work so what you need to do is add supports that can be later removed from the print so that it prints nicely until it's done so go watch that tutorial if you're interested in that if not you can just continue with this one and that's fine. So the next setting that's really important is infill. And you can see here, you've got a percentage. Now, if I go to print settings here and click infill, you can select the fill pattern. And I'm gonna select here just grid for, for a second, just because that's a better way to demonstrate this. So, I'm going to select say 15% and we're going to hit slice now in the bottom right and what I'll do is slice the model and it'll take us to our 3D preview tab where we can drag this cool little slider here and what this does is it shows you every single layer of the print and you can view exactly how it's going to print in this sort of preview and this is really handy so you can see that a 15% infill We've got this sort of pattern inside of the 3D model, right? And what this basically is, is it's adding strength to the model. So it's giving it some structural integrity, right? So rather than just print a hollow object, which would be quite weak, and it'd be easy to break, what it does is it adds an infill, which gives it that strength. And again, this setting depends on what you're trying to print. So for example, if I change the infill now to 80%, and I hit slice now again and bear in mind anytime you change a print setting you're gonna to have to re-slice so we just hit slice now again and that's fine and we'll drag the slider back down and you can see that we now have a much denser infill and what this would do is it make this 3d model much much stronger but what it also do is increase print time and use more plastic so again it's kind of this trade-off between you know how much filament do you want to use what is the 3d model going to be used for and does it need to be strong so all this, this 3d printing settings it's really up to you and it's so so customizable for everyone's needs and that's why it's so awesome so what I'm going to do is leave it at 15% 15% or maybe even 20% actually is a really sort of well-rounded number to go for and that's basically it for the 3d printer settings um, as I said it's really customizable 
to your needs and whatever you want to do. So what we're going to do now is export the G-code. So if we slice the model again, uh, we can see in the bottom right now we've got this sort of information section and it tells us how much filament it estimates we're going to use in both length and weight and also the estimated printing time and this is an awesome little thing that Bruce have added in before you couldn't see the estimated printing time until after exporting but now we can see it pre-export which is awesome so what you would want to do is click the export g-code button underneath and what this will do is it'll open up a new window where you'll have to select your SD card for your Prusa printer. And the reason we need to export G-code is because a 3D printer doesn't understand an STL file like the slicer does. What it understands is G-code. And G-code is bas basically an instruction set for a printer. And it contains information such as, you know, where should the X-axis be going? Where should the y-axis be going? What speed should it be going? How much filament should it be extruding at certain points? Those kind of things. But basically, we don't really need to understand it. Although it'd be, it's good to try and understand because when you come to create your own custom G-code inserts, that's awesome. But for now, we're just going to export the file to our SD card and that's all we want to do. So you'd select your SD card, click save. And that would put the G-code on your 3D printing SD card. And all you do then is put the SD card into your printer and print a 3D model as you normally would. And that's basically it. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope for a beginner this has been useful to you. If you're sort of an advanced user, you probably already know these things, but it's not aimed at those type of people. So what I'm currently doing at the moment is putting together a Prusa 3D printing course and I'm covering basically all the things you need to know about Prusa printers and how you can keep them running optimally and basically all the really important things you need to know. So if you're interested in that there's a link in the description below where you can sign up to my newsletter where you'll be notified when I release that course. It will be a paid course but it's full of rich content that you really don't want to be missing if you're serious about 3D printing. So before you go, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate all of you that subscribe and watch my videos. It means a lot. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing for more videos. And please leave a thumbs up on this video if you found it useful. If you want to support me in other ways, there's a link in the description below where you can do that. But it's up to you. If you want to see more of my videos, click one of these. And I hope you have an awesome day.